Foodborne Botulism by Wyatt Heyer. What is foodborne botulism? Foodborne botulism is a form of food poisoning caused by consuming foods that are contaminated by botulinum toxin are spores produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. The most common sources of foodborne botulism are homemade foods that haven't been preserved, canned, fermented, or stored correctly. Though extremely rare, store-bought foods can also be contaminated with Clostridium botulinum spores that are able to germinate into bacteria that can produce botulinum toxin. The body systems affected by the disease botulism. The nervous system is affected by the disease botulism because the neurotoxin botulinum and spores produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum that causes the disease botulism enters nerve cells and ultimately interferes with the release of acetylcholine. This causes the nerves to not be able to stimulate the muscles of the body. The muscular system is affected by the disease botulism because the neurotoxin botulinum interferes with the neurotransmitters, chemical signals, and nerve communication between the brain and the muscle. This causes the muscle not to be able to contract and leaves the muscle either fatigued or paralyzed. The respiratory system is affected by the disease botulism because the neurotoxin botulinum interferes with neurotransmitters, chemical signals, and nerve communication between the brain and the muscles. This causes the muscles that are involved in breathing to become either fatigued or paralyzed, which causes respiratory issues. The causative agent of foodborne botulism. The primary causative agent of foodborne botulism is a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. The image in this slide is a 3D drawing of the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Information on the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a rod-shaped and gram-positive bacteria. In addition to this, Clostridium botulinum is also free-moving and can produce the neurotoxin botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is also anaerobic, meaning it can live and grow in low oxygen conditions or without the presence of oxygen. In addition to this, Clostridium botulinum is a spore-forming bacteria that can form productive spores when conditions are not suitable. The spores that these bacteria form have a hard protective coating and layers of protective membranes that encases and protects the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Also, within this hard protective coating and these layers of protective membranes, these bacteria can survive for years. Optimal Growth Conditions of Clostridium botulinum the optimum temperature is around room temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The optimum pH level is around 4.6 to 8.9. And finally, the optimum environment is an anaerobic environment or an environment without the presence of oxygen. The scientific classification of the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific domain bacteria. Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific phylum Firmicutes. Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific class Clostridia. 
Sturm botulinum belongs to the scientific order Clostridiales. Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific family Clostridiare. Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific genus Clostridium. And finally, Clostridium botulinum belongs to the scientific species C. botulinum. Modes of transmission. Foodborne botulism is transmitted by consuming foods contaminated by botulinum toxin or spores produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Foodborne botulism's portal of entrance is through the oral cavity to the digestive tract. The Pathology and Pathogenesis of Foodborne Botulism Foodborne botulism is a bacterial infection caused by Clostridium botulinum. Symptoms of foodborne botulism generally appear 12 to 72 hours after consuming foods that are contaminated with botulinum toxin produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Signs and symptoms of adult foodborne botulism includes Difficulty swallowing, abdominal cramping, double vision, slurred speech, dry mouth, facial weakness, blurred vision, eyelids drooping, difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, and muscle paralysis. Signs and symptoms of infant foodborne botulism includes difficulties passing stool, muscle paralysis, weakness, weak cry, drooling from the mouth, drooping eyelids, sleepy and tired, difficulty sucking and swallowing, and poor coordination of body parts. And finally, the pathogenesis of foodborne botulism. Spores of Clostridium botulinum that contaminate foods germinate into adult Clostridium botulinum that can produce the neurotoxin botulinum. Individuals consume these contaminated foods, the neurotoxin botulinum enters the body and interferes with neurotransmitters, chemical signals, and nerve communication. This interference causes the symptoms and signs listed above. Diagnosis of foodborne botulism. A physical exam will be given to a patient to diagnose foodborne botulism. To start this, a medical doctor will examine the patient for signs of physical symptoms like muscle weakness or paralysis, drooping eyelids, weak vocal speech. This medical doctor will also ask about the foods the individual had consumed in the past few days. In case of infant foodborne botulism, this medical doctor may ask the family members if the infant has eaten honey recently and was or is constipated. This doctor might also perform diagnostic tests. These tests may include analysis of blood, stool, or vomit for the evidence of the toxin to help confirm foodborne botulism diagnosis. In addition to these tests, a medical doctor may perform EMG to evaluate muscle response, a CT scan, and a MRI to detect any internal damage to the head or brain, and a spinal fluid test to determine if infection or injury to the brain or spinal cord is causing symptoms that are linked to foodborne botulism. However, since most of these tests may take days, a physical exam is the main way to diagnose foodborne botulism.
Treatment of Foodborne Botulism Doctors treat foodborne botulism with a drug called botulism antitoxin heptavalent. This antitoxin is used because it stops and prevents the botulinum toxin from causing any more damage. However, it doesn't reverse the damage that has already been done. Botulism antitoxin heptavalent is usually administered to the patient by a healthcare professional or nurse using a sterile hypodermic needle attached to a syringe holding the antitoxin. Also, nurses will administrate medications that induce vomiting or bowel movements. The administration of such medications will help decrease the levels of botulinum toxin that is still left in the digestive system of the patient. Based on how severe an individual's symptoms are, the individual may need to be hospitalized for weeks or even months. In addition to this, if the individual is extremely ill, they may have respiratory issues if the botulinum toxin paralyzes their muscles involved in breathing. If that happens, a medical doctor will order a nurse to put this individual on a ventilator until they are able to effectively breathe on their own. How to prevent foodborne botulism. The prevention of foodborne botulism is based entirely on thermally destroying the spores of bacteria Clostridium botulinum that could possibly germinate into adult Clostridium botulinum bacteria that are able to produce a deadly toxin. To prevent foodborne botulism, an individual should do the following or perform the following. An individual should use a pressure cooker slash canner that allows water to reach 240 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. This range of temperature will kill all spores of Clostridium botulinum. An individual should boil home processed foods for 10 minutes before using or serving. An individual should perform proper heating processes on commercial and home canned foods. An individual should discard spoiled, expired, gassy, and swollen canned foods. To do this, an individual should put these canned foods in a tightly sealed bag, then place these bags containing the canned food in a regular trash bin outside of their home. An individual should not taste or consume foods that could be spoiled or that are expired. So individuals should not consume foods that are in damaged cans or cans that seem abnormal. Individuals should properly refrigerate all foods or leftovers within one to two hours after food preparation or cooking. And finally, individuals should properly thaw frozen foods in a refrigerator and not out in room temperature. The end. Thank you for watching my presentation. Here is the list of my references.